Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, inspiring, spiritual and personal growth. It is so good to see all of you, to have all of you with us on today. And those of you who are joining us online, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us as well. Of course, we begin by asking all of you to remember the communication cards in the chair backs in front of you to fill those out and place it in the collection plate as it comes by during this worshiping experience. And for those of you with us online, there is a virtual communication card on our website, as well as if you're with us on Facebook, we would hope that you would put something in the comment section to let us know that you're with us on today, because we are definitely grateful to have you. Please, my friends, remember to check your e-blasts as they come through each week and the newsletter, which will be out later this week, and calendars. Make sure you check our calendars for all of the events that are happening so that you can be up to date on what takes place here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Now, I do have a few announcements to make, my friends, and then we will move on with our worshiping experience for today. Uh, first and foremost, uh, those of you who are going to be a part of the Connections Ministry, there is a training today. I believe it's at 1 o'clock. Am I correct? 1 o'clock? Or is it noon? Okay. The training is at noon, and if I'm wrong, just stay. And it'll be right after that. So the training is today at 12 o'clock. So please make sure that you are here for that. And uh, Reverend Ellen Dittman will be here to lead that training. And she did a marvelous job uh, the Sunday before in, in showing us what it means to be a part of this great ministry. The Acts Bible study continues this week, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday evenings at 6 o'clock, which are the hybrid gatherings, which means you can join us online or you can come in person. And then the exact same lesson is shared the next day on Wednesday at noon here in our choir room. And that lesson takes place in person only. But we are continuing studying the book of Acts this week. As we're moving towards uh, Easter Sunday, we will be um, uh, having Easter lilies this year. And the worship committee has asked that you be, be aware of this. And as we begin to take orders, of course, you can make these orders in memory of someone or in honor of someone, and we'll have those sheets ready for you uh, within the next couple of weeks. Do not forget the Dialogue Institute and the Ramadan dinners that they're going to be hosting, that they have invited us to. Many of you have already signed up for the dates that you're going to be able to attend. The, uh, the available dates are April 11th and April 18th. Uh, today, however, is the last day to do this. Today is the last day to sign up for the dinners. I've got to get a head count to Barris Yeltsin on tomorrow or Tuesday. So please make sure that you sign up if you've not done so already. This same sign-up sheet or sign-up genius has been in the e-blast, so make sure that that has uh, gone accordingly. If you have any questions, contact the church office tomorrow, and we can let you know uh, if you have registered, if you will, signed up online, and if you didn't, you, we can still sign you up at that moment. Today also will be the last Sunday that we will take up the offering supporting our sisters and brothers with the earth earthquakes that have happened in Syria and Turkey. We do thank you for your support, uh, and we'll have a total amount that we will share soon, but we are very, very great, grateful to each and every one of you for how you have stepped up and stepped out to help those in need, our sisters and brothers in those two countries. Thank you. Um, do not forget, next Sunday is Daylight Savings. Oh, you don't have to sound so thrilled uh, about that. Yes, next Sunday is Daylight Savings. We spring forward, which means we Lose an hour of sleep. Yes, that is, that is correct. But that is going to take place on next week, so make sure you set your clocks so that you can be here uh, at the right time on next Sunday. We do have some other meetings that will be taking place this week, so those of you who are part of these particular committees, make sure you check your emails. Uh, the post-COVID steering team has a meeting this week. Make sure you check your emails there. 
And the committee chairs, I believe, also will have a meeting this week. Make sure you check your emails as well. I am happy to announce that the church has hired a new CDC director. Yes, we have. Now, unlike our other positions that are here in the church, the CDC director position does require some uh, uh, approval, if you will, from an outside agency. Uh, for that reason, I am not going to announce here who that person is. Many of you know who that person is because we have sent some emails out. But we will soon share who the person is with the world. And when that happens, of course, we'll have a nice reception for uh, this individual as well. But we, just so that you are aware, we have been working hard on this for several months. And our hats go off to our CDC search committee chaired by Kelly Toman for all of the hard work that they have done over the past several months. I mean, it has been a yeoman's task to get this to where we are. And Kelly, we do thank you for your work as well as your committee as well. All right, um, in just a moment, I'm going to ask Reverend Leanne Kerner to come uh, forward with her announcements that she has. But before I do that, I do need to share something about this morning's activities. Uh, as you are aware, uh, some time ago, we did have all of you uh, fill out surveys, or those of you who did fill out surveys, uh, discussing how we are looking at making the move from a Sunday morning Christian education program to a Sunday evening Christian education program. Well, thanks to the hard work and the support that you have given, the session has made its decision that we are going to be moving to a Sunday evening Christian education program, which will start on the 19th, I believe, the, the, the Sunday after spring break. For this reason, there are some things that we have got to do, we've got to manage to get ready for that. There will not be a Sunday school program this morning or next Sunday as well. However, the Reflections class will continue to meet at its regular time on Sunday mornings. But you just need to be made aware that that is what's going to happen. So for those who are not a part of the Reflections class, uh, there will not be anything after this worshiping experience on today. Uh, except for, of course, these, uh, the committees and the meetings that will be taking place later on this afternoon. All right, at this time, I'm going to ask Reverend Kerner if she will come with any announcements that she has for our youth, our children, and our families. Good morning. Uh, just a quick reminder that youth group does meet tonight, and it will be a super time. If uh, you're following our studies, we're learning about superheroes in the Bible, so it'll be great. If you have not picked up your Lenten devotional, there is still time. Um, if you are a family, you should have been getting the links to them in emails, so please be on the lookout for those. And just as Perrin said, we are moving to this Sunday night Christian education um, program, so that will include lots of things. So it will include classes, really from birth up. So there will be kids classes, youth classes, two adult offerings. All of those will be explained in the e-blast in various ways. There's a little info blurb about it on Facebook. So please look for those. We're also going to offer a meal. Um, it will be catered by our very own Fitz. So we're very excited by, about that. Um, there will be kind of an RSVP for that. So we make sure we can be good stewards of how much food we cook. That will go out this week. So if you plan to attend, please plan to fill out that RSVP so we are aware. And if you have any questions, you can let me or Kelly or anyone on the Christian Education Committee know. Um, and just to kind of save the date, typically the Easter egg hunt has been following Easter Sunday worship. This year it will be at 9.15 on Easter Sunday morning. So please put that in your calendar if you have friends who would like to participate. Thank you, Leanne. As we look to uh, talk about our members, a few things that I want to, to share with you. One, the first thing that I want to share with you is what happened on uh, yesterday or this past week and actually on Friday. Our own Fitz Mobilaire came before the Red River Presbyteries Committee on the Preparation of Ministry 
and he was wonderful. Wonderful, absolutely a blessing. And the committee uh, is going to be recommending to the presbytery that he will be placed on the roll as a candidate towards ordination in the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Now this is a big deal and this is what we have been talking about. But I wanted to share with you today on some things that some of you have been asking and why we have got to wait. Yes, uh, you will be given an opportunity to hear Fitz uh, present the, the message, the word of Jesus Christ very soon. But we're waiting until the presbytery has received him before we allow him to do a lot of these things. Once Red River Presbytery has received him, what they will do is give him actually back to us, if you will, to help with his development and a lot of the things, Bible studies and, 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 and prayer meetings and uh, preaching and all of these types of things he will be expected to do and we will support him in this regard. What I wanted to share with you specifically though on today is that he will be presented before the Presbytery on April 15th at the St. Timothy Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Bedford, Texas. I don't know what your plans are for that Saturday, but if you are available and able to be there on that Saturday as a sign of support for him, that would be a great blessing. Uh, that'd be a great blessing for Fitz. It'd also be a great blessing for the Presbytery. So I'm just asking you now to take a look at your calendars and see what it is that you can do. I've already shared this with the session. Uh, and, and of course, if you are able to come, uh, you won't be able to say anything. It's a, Presbytery meeting, but your presence will definitely be welcomed in that regard. All right. Um, also, do not forget, as we may mention already, uh, the services uh, to a celebration of life for Don Kern is this coming Saturday, March the 11th at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. here at the church. So we hope that you'll be here to support the Kern family. Uh, in this regard as well as to, to pay respects and to thank God for the life of Don Kern. We've had many members that have had surgical procedures this week. I'm not going to give you their names because they've not told me that I should give you their names, but just please keep them in your prayers as we are talking to the Lord today and the days to come. We do have birthdays this week. Happy birthday to June Koch this week. Uh, Gavin Dimmler has a birthday this week. And also, Pat Massingale has a birthday this week. So happy birthday, Pat, and happy birthday, Gavin. Happy birthday, June. It is an honor to present to you, my friends, our liturgist. This is her first time in this position on today and we are excited to have her serve in this regard. Let's worship God as Benita Sawyer directs us. Good morning. Good morning. Let's rise as we're able and for the call to worship. As we enter this time of worship, may we know the God who loves us all is with our rising and our lying down our prayers and praise and petitions, our sighs too deep for words, our tears and headache and joy. Know that God is with you now and always. May we bless one another and worship God together. Let us remain standing as we sing our opening hymn number 667, When Morning Gills the Skies. Let us sing.
God of the wild geese, we pray that you would gather us together and help us to know the way to go. Like the geese know when to fly, may we know when it is time to move on and when it is time to sit down. May we know when it is time to rise up and make noise and when it is time to be still in our heart. May we know our need to gather together and may we support one another. In this time of Lent, as we wait for the lengthening of the days, as we, wait the as we await the changing of the season, may we know you in the stillness of waiting for earth to be born anew, as we live into your ways of love, justice, and mercy. May the God of the wild geese remind us that we are not alone in this journey of faith. Amen. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. God calls us always to share faith, hope, and love, but as sinners, we often put our own needs first. In mercy, God asks that we confess our sins, turn from them, and receive God's forgiveness. As the people of God, let us confess our sins. Almighty One, we confess that we do not like to be vulnerable. We do not want to appear as weak. We do not want anyone to see our faults and failures. Yet you are the one who made us, and you know every fault, every crack, and you will call us beloved, made in your image. Help us to show grace and mercy to ourselves. May we be tenderhearted in our care of our bodies, minds, and souls, and grant mercy and grace to one another. Deliver us from the ways of this world that cause us to compare and compete, and instead open us to receive one another and our own selves with humility, courage, and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, who feared his own death, committed loneliness, and yet rose again, we pray. Amen. Now let us pray in silence. Amen. Know the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ are with you now and always. Know that there is nothing you can do that will separate you from God's love in Christ Jesus. There is no place you can go where God will not find you. You are God's beloved child. Know that you are forgiven when you forgive one another. Work to mend what needs to be mended and give over to God what cannot be. And know Christ's peace is with you now and always. Amen. May you have hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Now you're invited to pass the hope of Jesus Christ to one another.
My friends, as you return back to your seats, it's now time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. And there's some things that I would like to definitely share with you. A um, couple of joys, my friends. The church has new leadership, and we are grateful and we are thankful. On yesterday, Grace Presbytery met, and our new stated clerk and our new general presbyter were both installed in those positions. So we want to say thank you to the Lord for our new stated clerk, the Reverend Dr. Cal Walker, as well as our new general presbyter, the Reverend Christopher Lee. So we are thankful to the Lord in this regard. And then we're having new leadership in different parts of our denomination as well. A very dear friend of mine, the Reverend Dr. Bruce Grady, is now has been elected and installed as the General Presbyter of the New Hope Presbytery, which is out in North Carolina, that area as well. So God is doing great things in our denomination in many great ways. I would also ask my friends that you would keep Kevin Bugarelli in your prayers. Kevin had a back surgery this past Friday. He is at home, he is recovering well, he is in great spirits. Matter of fact, he will be coming to see us later on this month, but he has asked for our prayers as well. And then, my friends, I'm going to ask that uh, we would continue to pray for persons who are suffering from COVID, from COVID. Uh, and it, it is a different type of struggle now than it was before for many of us who are dealing with this. So please, please, my friends, keep our sisters and brothers who have COVID in your prayers. Our preparatory hymn for this month is the glory of these 40 days. And today we're going to sing the first two verses of this hymn. If you would like to stand for this prayer, you are more than welcome to do so while we're singing. If you would like to remain seated, that's fine as well. But now, my friends, let's prepare to talk to the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, excellent is your name in all the earth. We come to you today grateful, thankful for all that you're doing, Lord. Sometimes in this existence, we feel as if we're all by ourselves as if we are alone in the work that you called us to, in the service that you've called us to. Sometimes we feel that no other churches are trying to do what we're trying to do. Holding to your truths as we're trying to hold to your truths. 
Sometimes we feel like no one else cares about missions. No one's concerned about Christian aid. Sometimes we feel as if we're the only ones who care about our youth and our children. And yet, you show us that we're not alone. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you for always being there. For being our greatest supporter and our greatest support system. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. For holding us when we need it. For rebuking and disciplining us when we need it. Thank you for loving us. And as we come to you at this hour, O oh Lord, we ask your blessings upon the Kern family. Be with Johnny, her children, O oh Lord, and grandchildren. And be with this church as we move to celebrate the life of Don Kern. Oh, he's missed, Lord. He is missed. But our trust is that he is with you. And for this, we must give you praise. We must say thank you. We ask your blessings upon Kevin Bugarelli that you would uh, enable him to heal and recover quickly but holistically. as you have prepared great things for him to do in your kingdom, furthering it here in this world. We ask your blessings upon our new leaders in Grace Presbytery, that you'll be with Cal, that you'll be with Chris, that you would strengthen them, give them a greater resolve, toughening their skin, O oh Lord, as they move into these great positions with great responsibility, but also have to deal with great criticisms. Continue to pour into them as they give to us what you've blessed them with. We ask the same for Reverend Dr. Bruce Grady and New Hope Presbytery, O oh Lord. Now we ask your blessings upon all of your children who are suffering with COVID right now. Heal. Heal them, Lord, as only you can. While you continue to heal our nation, while you continue to heal this world, for we do ask your blessings upon all of us and upon all of our political leaders that you would touch their hearts and their minds so they will seek you before making decisions that affect us all. We ask that you would continue to keep our men and women in uniform safe. And for those who are away from their families, keep their families comforted and inspired during these days. Now bless this church, O oh Lord. This church. As we're doing our best to glorify you. We're doing our best to share with this world that you are alive and well. Seeking those who are lost. We do our best to share with this world that you don't give up on us. That you're in our corner. As we do our best to share you with everyone. These and all blessings we ask in your son's name. It's because of him we pray. Amen. 
and amen. You may be seated, my friends. Our first scripture reading is found in Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. And this is the NIV version. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Amen. Thank you, Benita. Let us pray. Prepare us today, Lord, to hear your word. Make us ready, receptive, responsive and lead us to share it with those we come in contact with. In your name we pray, amen. Our second text is Genesis chapter 12, verses one through the A portion of the fourth verse. But before we read it, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check, yes, yes, yes. We encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord. Please, my friends, listen and read along. The Lord has said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left, and as the Lord, as the Lord had told him. Amen. Let me read that last verse one more time. So Abram left as the Lord had told him. If you would, please, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Huh? That's right. Huh? <laughs> you want me to do what? Now look, I'm your pastor. <laughs> I'm your pastor. I'm the son of a pastor. I am very familiar with moving because of ministry. Many of us are familiar with moving because of a change of job or even a simple quest of adventure. But this right here, this is different. This is on another level. Uh, this right here requires something extra to do what Abram's about to do. Can you just hear his friends when he tells them what's going on? Can't you just hear what they could possibly say? Now, let me get this straight, Abram. You heard a voice that you never heard before that's telling you to leave us and to leave everyone that you know to go to some place you've never been. Do I have that right? Uh, Abram, let me ask you this. Do you know 
if there are any Cracker Barrels or Waffle Houses, wait, because if there's not a Cracker Barrel there, it's not a real place. I mean, <laughs> Abram, uh, let me ask this now. Um, you're going to a place that you don't know. To me, it sounds like you should not go, Abram. You should stay right where you are. You should stay put. Besides, hey, I hear voices all the time. I just ignore them. <laughs> moving, moving in this particular day and age of our text really is not as common as it is for you and for me. You see, a big difference is when we get ready to move someplace, we research the place. We check it out. There's, there's an initial visit. Sometimes there's several visits. We check out the neighborhoods that we would like to live in. We check out the school system that's there. We check out employment. We check out all of these particulars when we're getting ready to move. What recreational spots do they have? All of that. We check out, is there a Dave and Busters? Hey, I'm not going if there's not a Dave and we, all of that. We check out before we get ready to move, but this is not the case with Abram. He hears the voice of God and obeys. And this is actually quite remarkable, my friends. Because really at this point in Abram's life and at this point in the biblical text, there's very little biblical record of God literally and physically interacting with humanity since the previous chapter, chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. In that chapter, you will see that Abram's father, Terah, planned to move to Canaan. He already had a plan to move to Canaan. He was going to take Abram. He was going to take Sarai, his wife. He was going to take Lot. But for some odd reason, they don't make it. They don't get there. And it's roughly eight to maybe 15 years between the Tower of Babel and where we are on today. God speaking to Abram. And it's not clear if Abram has heard much from the Lord or even about the Lord at this time. Abram has very limited experience with God, my friends, yet hears and does. So Abram left, as the Lord had told him, the text says. For me, that says a lot about the voice of God. The voice of God that's comforting, that's reassuring. That's soothing. You see, Abram's leaving is called obedience. It's called obedience. Now, later this month, with another sermon that is on its way, we're going to talk about purposes and how our purposes are greater than we are. Abram's and Sarai's purpose was to make a great nation. To make a great people. And listen closely. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam consider Abraham as a founding father of their faiths. Our faith, as well as Judaism and Islam, may not have even happened had Abram been disobedient. We all need to know. We all need to know that when the Lord is urging us to do something, it's never an individualistic blessing. I mean, it definitely includes you, it does, but it's more than you. It's more than just being about you. Our obedience to God will allow others to be blessed. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Our obedience to God will be a blessing for other individuals. Don't you remember, as we're in the Lenten season, what Jesus says in Gethsemane? 
Let this cup pass from me. Let it pass from me. What would have happened to you? What would have happened to me? Had God Almighty listened to Jesus' request and said, okay. Said, okay. But Jesus catches himself and says, nevertheless, it's not about me anyway. It's all about you. Not my will, but your will be done. Abram's obedience to God ushers in the great nation he and his wife would begin. I told you this is on another level. It's going to take something extra going on here. And a little bit of that extra is obedience. Obedience. But the big extra that it takes. Abram had faith. Abram had faith, and he would display it much in his life. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And if you get a chance to read Hebrews 11, you will see we call it the, the great hall of faith, a list of men and women who were faithful to the Lord. And yes, Abraham is listed there. You see, my friends, it is absolutely impossible to freely serve the Lord without faith. You want to know why? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> because a lot of the stuff that the Lord asks us to do doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make love my enemies. That doesn't make sense. Turn the other cheek? What? That doesn't make sense. If my enemy makes me walk a mile, I'm supposed to walk another mile? That doesn't make sense. Tithing doesn't make sense. I worked all week for this, Lord. I got plans for this money. That doesn't make sense. Oh, my goodness. We're in worship right now. It doesn't make sense to be here when we could be in the bed. <laughs> Golf course or wherever we want to go on a Sunday morning. But here we are. We do these and more because of our faith and trust in God. And those who are lacking faith and trust in the Lord, they're the ones who tell you that it doesn't make sense for you to be here. They're the ones who will tell you that serving the Lord is just a fool's errand. But it's our faith, our trust, our belief, and my friends, it takes faith to move when God says to. It's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. And listen to me, God is not big on keeping you from being embarrassed by what God asks you to do. Oh, hello, somebody. <laughs> oh, they ridiculed Noah. All while he was building the ark. He had a live audience every day. Of hecklers. While he was building the ark. Oh, Penina ridiculed Hannah. Before she gave birth to Samuel because she couldn't give birth to anyone. And yet she prayed to the Lord for a child, for a son specifically. And God answered that prayer. And Penina still made fun of her until the boy was born. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not have a quiet crucifixion. While hanging on the cross, they made fun of him. 
Matter of fact, there was somebody hanging on the cross right next to him making fun of him. God does not always keep us from being embarrassed by what God asks of us. And it's not that God doesn't care about your feelings. That's not it. God does care about you and about your feelings. But your feelings are never going to be as important as the call God places on your life. never will be as important as what God calls you to do. So while you're serving the Lord, you can get some horrible emails from people. They can put some crazy posts about you. And God's not going to tell you that you need to quit. But suffer through it. Because the call is greater than anything that can be considered embarrassing to you. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to the Lord must believe the Lord exists. And the the Lord rewards those who earnestly seek God. Abram had faith. And his faith would be so much and so great that later God would change his name from Abram to Abraham, meaning father of great nations, of many nations. The more we trust in the Lord, the more we believe in the Lord, the stronger we become in the Lord. And the stronger we become in the Lord will cause us to stop saying, huh? When God has things for us to do, and through faith we will respond by saying, okay. Okay, Lord, this is what you have for me. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. Proverbs, third chapter, verses 9 through 10 states, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Let us give our tithes and offering to God.
be seated, my friends. Brian, John, if you all will come. Go ahead. Go ahead and get on your gloves. Okay. Just come back and sit right there and I'll be with you. There are many feelings that we can have when we come to this table. Many. But one that should always be present is that of thanksgiving. We should always be thankful for what the Lord has done and what the Lord continues to do in our lives. Yes, we, we experience joy, we experience some sorrow perhaps, we, we experience happiness, Yes, we, we experience all of these things, but you got to have thanksgiving. My grandfather used to tell us when we were kids that if somebody does something nice for you, be decent enough to say thank you. Can you think of a nicer thing done for you than for Jesus Christ to die in your place? So for this reason, we are to give the Lord thanks. Now this table, please understand who it's for. And let me explain who it's for by explaining who it does not belong to. It doesn't belong to any of you. It does not belong to me. Even though this table is housed in the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, it does not belong to Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Ownership is key here. Because whoever owns the table can get a chance to say who can come to it. Huh? How many times have people come to your house for dinner that you didn't invite? <laughs> whoever owns the table holds the right to invite who can come. And since this is not my table, this is not your table, this table does not belong to Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. This is the Lord's table. And the Lord has said, whosoever will may come. So please know this, my sisters and brothers. You have been invited to come and partake of this glorious feast that we call the Lord's Supper. Holy Communion, the Eucharist. This is for you, and this is for me. Let us pray. We say thank you, Lord. Yes, we do. Thank you for all that you have done, but especially for giving your life for us. And yes, it's true, we have not appreciated this, we have taken it for granted. We have tried to downplay it. And for this, we're sorry. Forgive us of those moments of weakness. But we do thank you for your sacrifice. And as we come to your table today, to eat the bread that represents your body, to drink from the cup that represents your blood, we pray that you will empower us to be more like you in every way. Every way. It's because of you that we're here. It's because of you that we pray. It's in your name that we ask it all. Amen. Amen. My friends, on well, the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed and arrested, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup, gave it to them, said, Drink all of this, 
For this is my blood poured out for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins. He said, as often as we do this, we are to do so in remembrance of him. And as you all are aware, my favorite piece to this communion narrative is that Jesus said, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until you are with me. Excitement is another feeling that we should have for that glorious day when we come to the Lord's table. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In just a few moments, I would invite you to come down. Yes, if one of you would come to this side, please. Thank you. In a few moments, I'll invite you to come down. And as you do so, uh, one of our service elders will give you a piece of the loaf, and then you will take in a communion cup if you would like that. We do have communion packets for those of you who would prefer that. And if you need gluten-free bread, we have in these black containers gluten-free bread. We're not ready yet to move to intinction, but we will be moving in that direction as soon as we can. But this may seem like we were doing a lot. I know the church that I grew up in, it was, you, you had the, the wafers and you had the cups. And that was it. Either you take it or you don't. That was it. It may seem like we're doing a lot. And maybe we are. But if we are, it's for the right reason. You see, everyone's invited to come to this table. No restrictions, no reservations, no hesitations. This is for each and every one of us. So all are invited. So now, my friends, will you come? And as you come and receive, please make sure you go back to your seats as soon as quickly as you can. Will you please come?
Has everyone been served? My friends, let us eat and drink together. Let us pray. We've come to your table. We've supped. We've dined. Now, Lord, empower us as we leave your table and go back into your world to be more like you in every way. In your name we pray. Amen. My friends, perhaps on today, this great and glorious day, this beautiful day that the Lord has made, perhaps on today there's someone who has come to us without Jesus Christ being in control of your life, without Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. But if this is the case, this great invitation is for you to make the best decision you can make this side of glory, and that is to begin to live your life fully to the glory of God with Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, this invitation is for you. Perhaps there's someone here today who would like to be a member of this church. Well, we'd be more than happy to have you as a member here of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. This invitation is for you as well. Maybe there's someone today and you are a member here, or maybe you're a member of another church, but you've just gotten off track, not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should. Well, this invitation is for you to start over again, to begin again. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that or ashamed of that. Many of us in this room have done it, online have done it, I have done it. It is a sign of how gracious our God is. For we serve a God not of a second chance, but of another chance. Amen? And if we were honest, many of us blew that second chance back in the 70s. <laughs> be thankful we serve a God of another chance. Or perhaps special prayer is what you need. That's fine as well. In just a few moments, we'll be singing our closing hymn. And as we're singing our closing hymn, if any of these have touched you, I would invite you to come down and join me. John, are you coming? Or, okay. and, or join John Walford, who is going to our service elder for this month. But if coming down and meeting us is a little bit too much for you, and for those of you who are with us online, I would encourage you to do this. Contact me this week. Reach out to me this week. You got all my contact information in front of you. Those of you present, you got it as well. And let's find a time to talk. Let's find out where you are in your walk with Christ. But be it that day or today, we always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. So before we uh, go ahead and stand, not at this time, I just want to, uh, you can go ahead and actually get your hymnals out and look at 292. Uh, this is a new hymn that we have not done before, but it is a beautiful hymn indeed. This goes right in line with parent scripture for the day. Uh, a small thing about this is as a musician, usually we get words or a person will write words and then you have a musician to write the, the harmony to go with this. And in this case, the music, the notes were actually made beforehand and then the words were applied to it. Uh, this is a, uh, it is a Chinese uh, hymn, and if you were to play this song on the piano, for my piano folks out there, if you were to play this song a half step down, you would only be playing on the black keys. And you'll hear it as you sing, and it's got that, that, uh, that Asian feel to it, and it makes it a very beautiful song. So I just wanted to give you that little note about the song that we're getting ready to sing, so at this time I invite you to stand. And what will happen is Maria will play it all the way through once, and then I will sing it with, the, uh, with you, the congregation. So at this time, let us stand and let us look at hymn number 292 as the wind song.
wind song through the trees as the stirring of the breeze. So it is with the Spirit of God as the heart made strangely warm as the voice within the storm. So it is with the Spirit down and join us please all right so the charge for this week is simply this uh, be obedient God tells you to do something do it <laughs> and you can because you have faith you have faith you've got enough faith in the Lord to be obedient and if you're that you don't have to say huh every time God has something for you to do now may the grace of God the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule about in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining us online.